All right, everyone, time to do a little bit of a uh, Friday evening um, drive video. All right, as I drive to my buddy's house, we play a little bit of a Xbox. I don't actually own an Xbox, but it's fun to go to my friend's places and play it once in a while. But doing one of these uh, Friday night drive chats like I like to do. So first of all, um, thank you. I got some emails wishing me, uh, you know, safety during the fires. As you guys might may or may not know, um, here in Northern California, we've had terrible fires lately, mostly due to uh, really bad winds um, that have really just down to power lines and to cause a lot of fires. So that's been the main thing going on here. Um, it's way worse than Santa Rosa. So I, where I live is not as bad. Um, there have been several regional fires where I live, but it's not nearly as bad as the poor people in Santa Rosa. Um, I did have to evacuate. Um, there was one close fire that we did have to evacuate from, unfortunately. Um, but they did leave the evac uh, yesterday after about three days, so I was able to go back home luckily, okay? And um, the fire, you guys, actually came within 200 yards of my house, okay? So 200 yards uh, closer and my house would have burned down, which is just crazy. But um, yeah, it, all I can do is thank God that it didn't burn down and, you know, hopefully it's Seems that uh, someone up there is looking after me, right? But yeah, you guys, 200 yards uh, from my house. Crazy, crazy. Um, I wasn't actually at my house when we had to evacuate, so if the house would have burned down, I would have had nothing except for my car, basically, because I stayed the night at my girlfriend's house. And um, yeah, I basically would have had nothing, you guys. Uh, get this, I actually almost didn't have my car, too. Um, I only got my car because the night before we had to evac, I wanted my car uh, because the night before, me and my girlfriend went to a friend's house and she drove, and so I saw no reason to go back to my house and get my car since we took her car. And then I just happened to go get my car because I figured I might need it. And uh, if I hadn't went and gotten my car and the house would have burned down, I would have had nothing including my car. I would have had literally nothing except for my clothes and my wallet and my cell phone. You know what I mean? Crazy, crazy. But, um, so yeah, all good on that front, but you guys, the fires are still really, really bad in Santa Rosa right now. Um, I don't know the exact total, something like 30,000 acres from one of the fires, the biggest one in Santa Rosa is like 30,000 acres. Um, if you look at some of the parts of Santa Rosa, the actual like suburbia where the fire went through, it just looked like a nuclear bomb went off. I was watching drone footage on YouTube and you guys, it looks like a, if you look it up on YouTube, uh, type in like drone footage, or maybe it's a helicopter, I'm not sure, um, of the Santa Rosa fire. Insanity, just literally burnt to a crisp. All you see is just burnt out shells of cars and chimneys for miles and miles and miles. Uh, it looks like Armageddon, basically. You know, it's a complete firestorm. Because basically what happened, you guys, is there were 40, 50 mile per hour winds. And we had a lot of rain last season here in Northern California. And what happened is just there's just so much growth and then uh, you combine that growth with really dry conditions, uh, no rain, um, and then these 50 mile per hour wind gusts, and you basically got a firestorm on your hands, you know what I mean? That's my basketball rolling around, that's what that is. Annoying the hell out of me. I'll put it up here. Let's do that. Oh man, you guys got a real close up on my face, huh? You've probably never seen that close up to my face. Especially on HD, right? And as you can see, I haven't even shaved because today was the first day uh, I could go back home, so I haven't trimmed my beard at all. But yeah, you guys, Santa Rosa's even had it way worse. So that's the update with the fires. Um, it's too early to tell. I don't know if it was arson. It seems suspicious to me that they were all lit at the same time. Um, like 17 fires within like a 50 mile radius started. Um, you know, that's just that could just be the conspiracy theorist in me, though. But you know, there's a good chance, you know, it's just fire started by down power lines. I know that one that started near me, that almost burned down my house, was from a down power line. Just the wind, what happens, you guys, is that there's these wind gusts, 
they blow the branches onto the power lines, this starts a fire, and then there's already so much wind going, they just whip the fires into a frenzy with all this dry brush around me. You know, you guys can probably see out my window what kind of landscape I live in. You know, here in Northern California, it's just really wooded, right? Um, I don't, you know, this is like a really brushy, uh, a lot of oak trees, a lot of pine trees. And when it gets dry, you know, this stuff can just light in a second. You know what I mean? It gets crazy. But we're supposed to get a rain storm, I think, uh, in a week or so. So hopefully that'll be able to fight some of the fires and, you know, make everything more wet so we have less chance of fires. In crypto world, Bitcoin broke 5,500. I think it's at about 5,600 right now. I think it went up to about 5,800. Um, it's just up, it's an all-time high. Five thousand dollars was about the all-time high. Just skyrocketed through that, um, and now it's sitting pretty at about fifty-six hundred. Bitcoin's still a buy, you guys. Um, a lot of people are, see that price point, and they're scared to get into Bitcoin because they think it's in a bubble or something. Bitcoin is not in a bubble, okay? Bitcoin is not even worth the market cap of Apple computers. Okay, I want I want you that to sit with you guys for one second, okay? Bitcoin, which is a new type of currency that has a good chance of being the new reserve currency of the world, where all this innovation and and uh, all this tech is happening on, and it's a type of currency, it's a type of currency that people can use to transact with, isn't even worth like half as much as Apple Computer, uh, you know, the company Apple, okay? Let alone Google or all the, some of these companies like Amazon and stuff, okay? And so, people think Bitcoin's in a bubble. Bitcoin is not even cl relatively close to a bubble, okay? There are quadrillions of dollars sitting in, in derivatives um, and the debt markets with fiat currencies, okay? With the US dollar derivatives and the Euro dollar and the yen, okay? These nations are trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. There's trillions of dollars sitting on the sideline, okay? That haven't entered the markets yet they're looking for a position to enter, okay? And people are over here saying that cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin are in a bubble, okay? And that couldn't be more farther from the truth, okay? So don't get worried too worried about the price point. Just save as much money as you can, invest it into Bitcoin and these other cryptocurrencies that I like. Um, silver is still screaming by. Silver is up about a dollar this last week, but, dollar, but silver should be much, much higher. And it's, it's gonna happen soon, you guys. So the silver price manipulation um, cannot go on much longer. I know, I know that I've talked about this before, but oh man, I'm, it's kind of hard on the video, huh? This sunset behind me. Pretty sunset though, but not good for shooting a video, I guess, but can't really do much about it, can I? Um, anyways, silver is the most underpriced physical asset on planet Earth, okay? It's the most manipulated by far, JP Morgan, you know, JP Diamond, the CEO of JP Morgan that comes out and bashes Bitcoin, they've been manipulating silver for decades, okay? And they they basically, they short sell it on the paper markets and they buy physical, okay? And they've been ringing it for years. And um, this has been going on for decades and silver has been manipulated for decades and decades, okay? And so, silver is still manipulated and um, when silver breaks free, it'll be basically all or nothing, okay? Um, when silver really does break free from the man manipulation, um, it'll be worth hundreds and hundreds of uh, dollars per ounce, okay? Hundreds of dollars per ounce. Eventually, it will be in the thousands, I believe, you know? Um, I think a silver will at least be a thousand dollars an ounce. And um, it's getting closer, you guys. Every day that passes, and uh, more and more, debt is added to the system, we get closer and closer to a, you know, the system falling apart, the closer we get to it, okay? And by the system falling apart, you know, I want you, I don't want you guys to think that I think it's going to be like Armageddon or anything, and I've kind of talked about this, okay? What this is, is the death of the fiat system into the crypto system, okay? Because the crypto system with Bitcoin and Litecoin, Ethereum, and all these altcoins and these tokens, this is a better money system, you guys. And uh, good money pushes out bad. And so uh, this is just the death of the dollar fiat system and the birth of a new system. A new system built on trust, built on mathematics, 
that can't be corrupted because it's based on math. It's you know it's computer code. It's uncorruptible. You know what I mean? And so we're seeing um, the birth of this system. Okay. And so yeah, people that say it's in a bubble are fools, absolute fools. Um, but yeah, silver is still a good buy too. So consider you know doing like 50% crypto, 50% silver. Silver most people consider much safer. Um, it's not going to make you as much money in the short term, I don't think, as crypto. You know, it's not as volatile as crypto, um, but it's still a very good buy. And um, you know, what I did in the beginning is I put most of my money into Bitcoin, and then as Bitcoin went up, I pulled out my profits into silver, and that's a good way to go too. Is um, you know, pull out your initial investment into crypto as silver, and that way, even if crypto went to zero, which I don't think it will at all, but even if Bitcoin went to zero and these cryptos went to zero. Um, you know, at least you didn't lose any money. You still have your initial investment in silver. And that's not a bad way to go, you guys. That's what I did. And so um, I actually, even though I have all, I've made a ton of money in cryptos, and I still have a lot of money in cryptos that I'm just letting ride, um, you know, I actually pulled out my whole entire initial Bitcoin investment into, uh, as silver. So right now, if all my crypto assets went to zero, and I'm pretty diversified, I mean, all my crypto assets went into zero, I would still have made a little bit of a profit because I had more silver than when I started. Okay, and that's that's you know that's that's a nice way to go because I don't have to worry about it too much, right? It's like oh, went to zero, well I still have my silver at least, right? But what I'm doing and what I actually think the best way to go, you guys, is 90% crypto, 10% silver. Um, this actually might not be the best way to go um, for a, 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 a period of time. Um, it's the best way to go. Because I've been investing in cryptocurrencies for about two years, and cryptos have just, they've obviously outgained silver and gold by orders of magnitude, right? Um, so I've made a ton of money with cryptos, and then I pull it out into silver, uh, you know, 10% of my profits into silver. Um, is that the best way to go right now? Because we're getting closer to silver breaking free. You know, it's hard to say. There will be a point where silver will outperform the cryptos. You know, that's important for you guys to realize. There will be a time when cryptos. You know, it'll only be for a year or two, but silver will outperform even Bitcoin, okay? Maybe not some of the smaller cap cryptos or something like that, but... Um, so, that's something to be aware of, you know? Um, hedge your bets with silver, and it's nice to have something physical and, you know, take out your profits. But I'm pretty aggressive with the crypto, guys. I do 90% crypto. I don't own any stocks. I don't own any bonds. I don't own mutual funds, none of that stuff. 90% crypto, 10% silver, that's all I do, baby. And trust me, it's, um, I think it's the way to go. I can't beat that, especially with silver getting ready to break free. And um, and you, you can diversify with the cryptos. You know, even if one of these cryptos goes to zero, they're not all going to zero. And so, you know, I don't only just own Bitcoin, I own a lot of Litecoin. I own, um, and I own those three tokens that I've told you guys about. And these are all screaming deals. Um, Veritasium is going to be a monster. Um, if you guys want to go to YouTube, look up Reggie Middleton. Um, just type in on YouTube. And I think, you know, if you're a smart person, you'll begin to realize that you know, Reggie Middleton knows what he's talking about. And he's a financial genius, um, in my opinion. And a lot of people say Veritasium is a scam. It's because they don't really understand the value proposition. Um, so you have to, one thing you guys have to understand is that the way things work is uh, people get caught up in anything and then they think anything outside of their realm is a scam or is silly, right? So this was true with Bitcoin. So in the beginning, Bitcoin was considered a scam by most people, um, you know, especially like gold and silver investors, right? And then now you see a lot of people, a lot of gold and silver investors, they're starting to diver diversify into cryptos and Bitcoin, right? It's because over time, you know, it's been eight years now since Bitcoin was created. It's gained more and more market value and more and more people are using it. And people uh, eventually, you know, come around, right? And so in the beginning, most people thought Bitcoin was a scam. But the people that took the risk, risk and understood the technology, you know, they made, they made a lot of money, okay? And this is true with like Ethereum. Uh, so now out of, you know, the whole investing community, we have Bitcoin. We had Bitcoin, which was a small part of the community, right? And everyone thought Bitcoin was a, was a scam. And then as Bitcoin grew, you had other fragments of that community, like the Ethereum community. And then the Bitcoin community, most of them, when Ethereum started, I, I saw this happen in real time as Ethereum started out, because I, you know, I was investing in Bitcoin at the time. Most of the people at the Bitcoin, like Reddit and the forums, thought that Ethereum was a scam. 
because how can there ever be a different blockchain? There's no use case for a different blockchain. Well, Ethereum proved them wrong. And the, the dev team and the people behind Ethereum and the community proved the Bitcoin community wrong. You know, that there was a place um, for the for this, uh, you know, different blockchain that's more programmable. It's not, you, you know, Ethereum's not used so much as money or store of value like Bitcoin is. It's more of like a platform to build applications on. It's almost more like oil, and then you're burning Ethereum to run code on it, okay? And so they proved them wrong. And then now a lot of people in the Bitcoin community accept Ethereum. And they're like, oh, okay, Ethereum is kind of cool. You know, you can build all this kind of cool stuff on Ethereum. Um, and they, a, lot, a lot of the Bitcoin community has come around. Not all of them, of course, just like a lot of people in the gold and silver community think Bitcoin's a scam. And then a lot of people in the other investing community think gold and silver is silly. You know what I mean? And so the truth is somewhere in between all these, and you have to learn how to, you know, that's why the meditation is so powerful and you're know, healing your body so you can discover the truth, okay? And now the third wave that I'm seeing is the people in like, in the cryptocurrency community, so Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, um, Monero, Dash, these are all what we call cryptocurrencies, right? So they're, they're meant to be used as money. Um, and a lot of people in these communities think that these companies being built are scams because they don't understand the value proposition. So a lot of people in the Bitcoin community and the Ethereum community and all these communities, they think that Veritasium is a scam because they don't understand that Veritasium is a company and has a different business model and a different value proposition. Veritasium and Populous, the other one I like, and Omisi Go, okay, those three you know companies I like. I also like Salt Tokens and you know some of the other companies. Um, they, they get called scams a lot. You know, let's just say, let's just talk about Veritasium. Let's keep on Veritasium for a second because, uh, you know, Veritasium, it's not trying to replace Bitcoin and they don't understand that. They don't understand that Veritasium isn't designed or meant to be used as a cryptocurrency. It's not trying to replace Bitcoin. It's not trying to replace Litecoin or Ethereum. Veritasium is trying, you know, which uh, is the platform that Reggie Middleton runs, is trying to replace Bear Stearns. It's trying to replace uh, JP Morgan. It's going after you know um, stock exchanges, right? It's trying to put truth in stock exchanges, um, and it's like a platform that has different layers to it, like Google does. You know, Google has Google Search now and Gmail, and uh, you know you have Google Apps and you have every, all these like this this like Google umbrella, right? That's what Veritasium is doing. So imagine Google uh, built on the blockchain, right? So you have. So through the Veritasium token, you know, you have access to a decentralized exchange. You also have access uh, to a rental where you can rent people your Veritasium for access to the Veritasium platform. You also have access to stock exchanges like the Jamaican Stock Exchange and all these stock exchanges that use Veritasium for their exchanges. Um, you also have access to, you know, um, different sort of markets like commodity markets or you have access to buy distressed assets that are on the Veritasium platform and, and all these different things that can be built as part of the Veritasium platform, okay? And then as the platform gets used more, you know, the Veritasium tokens go up in value because they're a scarce resource, okay? Um, so that's the value proposition of Veritasium and I think it's going to be a monster. And um, I, that's the third wave that I'm seeing is that, you know, Bitcoin was the first wave and then the second wave was the altcoins like Litecoin and Ethereum that turned out to have value proposition. And the third wave is these companies and tokens being built um, that people think are a scam, but I think they're gonna be absolutely huge and have massive returns for investors. You know, Cliff High and the web bots, in the data, it shows at some point Veritasium will like, quote unquote eclipse Bitcoin. We don't know if that's in market value or you know price per token, but um, I'm not saying that will happen, but that's what Cliff High seems to think will happen. Um, so that's important to, you know, uh, to realize is that these companies, you know, they have different value propositions. Populous, the other one I talk about, their value proposition is it's a platform to uh, buy and sell invoices. So businesses have invoices, um, you know, due to having to borrow money at the end of the month or however long to meet payroll and other things like that. And Populous is a platform to dramatically reduce the cost of invoicing, um, which is like a trillion dollar industry. Okay, so imagine you know how big this company will get be this platform will be once that gets live. Okay, so that's important to realize. Um, and so yeah, so they're just getting called scams by a lot of people in the you know, the 
the crypto community, but they'll come around too once they understand Veritasium more and they see it in action and they see what Reggie Middleton's doing, you know, it'll begin to be accepted more, but it'll be too late to receive the massive gains that you could have gotten before, you know, the herd got it, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I think Veritasium bottomed, it looks like Veritasium bottomed at about $60, um, and it's still a screaming buy, you guys. Veritasium, Populous, and Omisi Go is still screaming buys. Um, so, you know, buy them with three fists. You know, put a little in each one if you want, or do whatever. Um, you know, I still like salt tokens. You know, I made a video about that. Um, it's it's going to be a huge platform. Because it's, it's a salt is a bridge between the fiat world and the crypto world. Where, um, you, you know, capital markets can get access to the capital of, you know, crypto people, um, which I, you know, check, so check out that video I actually made about salt tokens, um, and so, you know, moral of the story is the truth is different than, you know, people get attached to anything, right, so, you know, the Bitcoin people got attached to Bitcoin and thought Ethereum was a scam, the Ethereum people, or the altcoin people, or the alt, you know, the alt cryptocurrency people, you know, they get attached to that, and they think that, you know, there's nothing outside of cryptocurrencies, and you can't have a business platform built on the blockchain, you know, so they get attached to that. Um, you know, so, you know, constantly breaking these old attachments um, is very powerful. And, you know, the pushing down exercise, you know, which is the staple of nutritional balancing science, really helps you do that, you know, break these preconceived, you know, ego conditions about what you think should is should or should not be, okay? Um, and, you know, that'll, that'll help you out and everything. Because only by bringing truth into your body can you, you know, can you find the truth. Um, you know, your parents aren't the truth. Um, most parents are sick and they, they lie to you. You know, most of society is not the truth. The schools are certainly not the truth. Um, and most other people are not the truth. So you need to learn to discover the truth yourself, you know. And, um, you know, by doing that and listening to my own intuition, I'm very well off now. And, um, you know, I made a lot of money with Bitcoin that I wouldn't have made otherwise because people said, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, so many people made fun of me for buying Bitcoin. You know what I mean? So many people in my family told me to go to school and that I should, if I wanted to heal people, I should go become a doctor and go into hundreds of thousand dollars of student loan debt or do whatever. You know, a lot of the people I know went into debt for, you know, a lot of the young people I'm around or my group of friends, they all went into student loan debt to get pointless degrees. They even get good, good degrees. And now they're 40, 50, 60, $100,000 in debt. And, um, you know, for an education that didn't teach them anything about anything, really. And the shadow of the debt that's, you know, a ball and chain that's attached to them for the rest of their life. You can't never pay off. You can't never get rid of it in bankruptcy. You know, student loan debts are the only debt that you cannot get rid of in bankruptcy. So student loans follow you to the day you die. And um, yeah, and I went against that grain. I started my own business, you know, teaching nutritional bouncing science to you guys on this YouTube channel. And I went against the grain and I went on a limb. I started a YouTube channel. I saw there was a market need. Yeah, I saw, you know, I saw nutritional bouncing was getting bigger and I saw, you know, no one's making YouTube videos. Why is anyone doing that? And so I decided to be that guy and started making, I was the only person making YouTube videos about nutritional balancing. And I got a lot of clients from it. And I, you know, I made a lot of profits. You know, I'm, it's a for, even though I do heal people, and I don't charge that much, it's still a for-profit business. And, and I put all my profits into Bitcoin and you know, gold and silver too. Because uh, I believed in it and I studied it and I was able to heal myself and clear my mind so I could see the value proposition of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And I went against what everyone was telling me, and it's worked out beautifully. And now I'm in a better position than any other young people, I, you know, any other young person I really know my age. Um, and that's just important to learn to listen to your own intuition, and especially if you want to become an, you know, an entrepreneur and solve real problems for people, you know. And um, you can't listen to people; you have to follow your own truth, you know, because only God is truth. And most other people are lying to you. There are good people that you should that wisdom you should listen to in this life. But the most important thing you can do is learn to harness your own wisdom and, and listen to your own intuition and learn things for yourself and go against the grain if you have to. And um, it's worked out really well for me. And, um, and I think it will continue to. And so I want to encourage you guys to don't be afraid to, you know, 
not listen to your parents sometimes, especially as you become an adult. And your parents are sometimes very wrong. And well, many parents are mixed up and just as sick as the rest of society. And they, some parents are even worse. Some parents don't even want, they secretly don't want you to do well. They secretly want you to go to student loan debt and, um, you know, not do well because secretly they don't want to see their children do better than they did because of their egos. That's the truth. That's the truth with a lot of parents, not all of them. And most parents are doing the best that they can. And most people are doing the best that they can, but they're still not truth. Okay, you guys? And so, that's it. That's it for this video. Got a little ranty at the end. But, um, you know, I just want to know that I love you guys. And uh, I always speak from the heart with you guys. And I'm doing this because I want, I want to help you guys. I want to help you guys heal. And I want to help you guys achieve financial success. That's why I teach you guys about cryptocurrencies and buying silver. And, I, the tr and teach you about the truth about politics and stuff and good sources of information you guys can follow and um, how to do your program and how to help you on the program and explain the program to you guys, the nutrition bouncing program. Um, you know, because I love you guys and I want to be of service. And I, um, and I have an obligation because these things have helped me so much become successful and live a happy, healthy life. And it is my duty to share it with others so that they may experience the same benefits. So don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends, okay? Don't forget to share it on your Facebook. Tell others about this YouTube channel. Try to spread the word. Try to teach as many people as possible about these sciences so that we can help as many people as possible. Happy Sabbath, you guys. The sun is setting. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.